Hello, I'm Brian Warren. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. Today, we're going to see what it looks like to face a trial head on. Sometimes in life, we're forced to endure seasons of suffering where it feels like the only thing that we're able to do is hang on. You'll meet one woman who today shares how her perfect little world was flipped upside down after the birth of her son. Lori Marks Vinson will be sitting down with Laura Lynn to talk about the daily struggle to cope with an illness that went undiagnosed for over a decade. Thank you, Brian. Well, I don't know if you are facing a trial of all trials in your life, and I wonder if you feel like it has been going on and on, and when will God intervene in my situation? Our guest today, you need to spend the next couple of days with us because she has got a magnificent story. Uh, Lori Marks Vincent, thank you for joining us. I love your story because uh, you know that God is great, even when there are some seasons that it seems he's, he's absent. Yes. Tell me about many years ago what happened. You got married. Got married in 1987 to the love of my life. We've been married 27 years. And, uh, you know, I didn't expect to be a mom right away, but suddenly, with about, we were married in November, so January I found out that I had uh, been, I was pregnant. And you, of course, go with it. And what else can you do? What else can you do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you go with it's it. It's a gift from it's God. Gift. That's right. Yes. Although at the time I was uh, suffering with uh, a lower back and a neck injury. Mm -hmm. And so I was not working. And so to be pregnant at that time was a little bit nerving because it was like, it just, oh no, mm -hmm. <laughs> how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to actually walk through a pregnancy? I'm not very tall to begin with. And then on top of that, have this injury, which really felt like I had just been given the short end, literally, of the mm. stick, right. you know. And so I knew that I had some challenges ahead of me. Right. And then it didn't end there. You know, life is funny, isn't it, Lori, that sometimes you think you've been given one challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but lo and behold, oh. right on the tail of it comes something else. I know some of our viewers write in and they mm -hmm. call the prayer lines and they're saying, I'm facing like a whole bunch of stuff, and a whole bunch of stuff began hitting you. Yes. Um, the pregnancy was tough, um, and I... I felt a lot of depression kind of start to set in, but I hadn't given up and I, it wasn't the priority. And, uh, you know, getting a job for my husband and finding a new place to make home was the priority with the baby on the way, getting our, our furniture and the baby's room settled and that. And, you know, and that all took place. God took care of all of that, you know, and it was wonderful. Um, the, what really set in was when the baby was born, uh, that's when illness set in and I had depression and I think that that by just ignoring it it made it easier at that moment to press forward mm -hmm. but in the long run it catches up with you right so as time went on you started facing worse and worse days where even um, that overwhelming feeling that maybe you just didn't want to live anymore right there was a time when it felt like it was better to just die uh, to just let it go and just, you know, end life. And, and most of it was really just a running away. It was, it was just really tough to stay in one place, and I felt like I constantly was trying to find space. Right. You know, sometimes we face um, some sort of emotional or mental trial that is overwhelming, and we mm -hmm. don't know what is going on, and we feel like we're going crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that was part of it, true, because uh, with the depression, came a feeling of uncertainty in, in number one, who I was, and the second thing was is that I had what seemed like at the time postpartum psychosis setting in, a little bit of it. And what would that be? That is the extreme of just the baby blues. You know, the baby blues is just typically what you would face, but it's the extreme. And there are many times when I felt like, um, you know, somebody would tell a joke, mm -hmm. and I knew that my head was saying, you know, you should laugh, this is funny, but I couldn't tell if my face was actually laughing or if I was smiling. Mm. I didn't, things were disconnected emotionally and psychologically. Right. And so what were you thinking at that time then? Were, was there a growing worry that I don't know what's wrong with me? Um, yes, and on top of that, um, it drew me into a place where I wanted to know exactly what it was 
and go to the source. And I knew that because of my relationship with the Lord in my youth that I could ask any question and I could get an answer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would take a while, but I would get an answer. And so um, I spent a lot of my nights in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep and I was in pain, I would get up and I would spend time with the Lord. I would have that intimacy with Him and I would write my songs and they're really just were therapeutic. And they were really just a time when I and the Lord just sat together and he would just love on me and show me how much he loved me and speak to me. Mm -hmm. And it felt like I was receiving mysteries about life, really, and about myself. And so the mm -hmm. songs were kind of birthed out of that. They really became celebrations of my time with him and, and mm -hmm. learning about his love right. and his constant faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And and at the same time that you were going through a lot of emotional trauma, you had some physical symptoms that were... Uh, mm -hmm. manifesting. Yes, um, there was a lot of pain in my muscles. I could never, um, I could uh, I could try to exercise but never come to a place where I would have come to feeling full endurance and I could go on and do another level and a higher level in, in, in some sort of fitness and so as a result um, I never got to a place where I felt like I was fit. Um, I, you know, could walk with my son for three blocks to school even when he was five years old and you know, this is over a duration of 13 years, but even when he was five, I would walk to school with him for three blocks and then still feel like three months later I had not physically adjusted. Mm. And so it was, it was hard. Right. So in all of that, what did you find out about God in that waiting time? That he's faithful. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else I can say except that my lack of trust um, was completely unfounded my lack of trust and even today you know there's that moment where it it you know you think you're worried about something but you have to just take it to God you really have to take it to God and really what it did was it made me when I said I felt like I needed to run away I really what I needed was to run to and I learned to run to God mm. now uh, for our viewers today, they need to know that um, there is more to this story. There Certainly. is a great victory. <laughs> Some out there might be feeling that, um, that they don't know where the answer is and it's been too long. Give right. them a final word. Uh, you know, the final word in everything is, is that we have to just trust God. Trust God. Trust God. I, he's coming through. He's coming through. There is victory on the way. And no matter what you feel, that faith could be so weak for you, but God can still hold that faith up yes. for you. He's yes. the author and the finisher. You know, when we are weak, He is strong. Well, I'm not sure if you were with us yesterday, but uh, Lori, you shared a story. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for joining us. You're an author and a speaker um, and, and a songwriter, a singer-songwriter as well. And so you have a, a very busy ministry at this point mm -hmm. but yesterday you shared a devastating story basically of 13 years of being in a depression sometimes called a psychosis um, and and really struggling through some very difficult times and in fact uh, we don't know from that point what happened so I wonder if you can catch us up well at that point we had moved from I guess you could say discovering what was going on. We finally I had an appointment with a specialist and the specialist revealed something and the specialist said, you have fibromyalgia. Now, it was great to know a name to the condition. Um, and of course, with that fibromyalgia comes the chronic fatigue and comes the depression. Mm -hmm. And so, and pain, and pain, pain, the pain, well, the fibromyalgia in itself is, is Medically, what they claim is, is that the cortisol, which is a hormone, increases under a certain uh, time of stress, and it increases and holds itself in the muscles, and so then you're not able to release it. And it's usually a combination of having an emotional and physical trauma, and I had had several emotional and several physical traumas happen all at once during the time of our first son's pregnant, pregnancy when I was pregnant with him. So that really catapulted the whole illness. Hmm. And so what did you feel um, at that time, right before God began to do something in your life? Yes. But were you in a, a state of desperation, deep depression? 
how bad did it get? I was at the point where I didn't know if I was coming or going, really. I mean, I would wash dishes and cry. I would do laundry and I'd vacuum and I'd cry. Always crying and not really knowing why I was crying. And so this was a real big frustration for me. And so one day I said, I got to get to the bottom of this. I got to know what's going on. I called a Christian counselor and told this person what was going on. And she said, Lori, I don't know what's going on inside of you, but God knows. And if you just ask him to reveal what's going on inside of you, you will find an answer. And so I asked God that night to counsel me in my sleep. Be wow. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know how else to do it. I didn't feel like mm -hmm. I could approach it any other way. Did you say those words? Yes. Will you counsel me in yes. my sleep? I said, Holy Spirit, counsel me by your Holy Spirit in my sleep. And I had a series of dreams that night that revealed deep hurts and wounds and things about myself that I really didn't want to deal with. And they were self-esteem issues and then some pain and feeling of being unappreciated. Those things that gave me a sense of value. And I didn't have that sense of value. And I realized that when I woke up that morning, I was laying in the fetal position on my side and I felt God's presence sitting right there at my belly. And you know, the important thing is, is that, um, as time went on, God actually gave me something to hold on to. Mm -hmm. As time went on, even though I was depressed, God gave me more. He gave me more to hold on to. Right. And I was listening to a preacher on TV and he spoke the words from Psalm 103.5. And Psalm 103.5 says that he satisfies our mouths with good things and he renews us with the youth of an eagle. I needed that. Mm. I grabbed a hold of it. It was like, the me inside jumped out and said, run for that. Right. And I felt it. And I, at that moment, made a decision not to, to just dwell in my circumstances, but to go above them and to trust God and like an eagle, soar above. Hmm. So the, the symptoms and everything, did it leave at that point? No, it you took had... actually meeting another pastor who was involved in healing ministry. Yes. And I had called my husband, I was away from home and I was crying and I was in pain. And <laughs> um, literally, uh, it was in the bathroom and she knocked on the door and said, can I help you, are you okay? <laughs> and they counseled me and they prayed with me and I never thought anything of it except that, that I was just thanking God for the opportunity to go and minister there and then to be ministered to. Mm -hmm. And I came home and two weeks later, and that's what fibromyalgia does, you go up and you go down and you don't know next day what you're gonna feel like and, and you're so so desperate some days, uh, so, so low in the valley and then the next day you could be just fine. And so two weeks it went by and God really spoke to me and said, I've healed you because I woke up out of bed without any pain. I had been sleeping through the night. I felt refreshed. It had changed completely wow. overnight. Right. But and it took two weeks to discover it. And does, has that remained till this day? Remained till this day. Right. Yes. Do you know what I love about your story is I think that all of us relate to that season where it might not be a physical um, ailment. It might just be a, a situation that we're going through or perhaps, you know, um, a, a depression. Mm -hmm. And we don't know when or how God is going to come through for us. But what you found out is... He does. He does. And so quietly and so gently, sometimes, you know, the power of God is so strong that we think that we need to be hit with it. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, he comes in so quietly and so gently. He knows what we need. He does know. Thank you so much for sharing your story, your Victoria story. Thank it's you. It's wonderful. Thank you.